Okay, so um, thank you very much for joining this uh, uh, session here today, which was put up uh, by Raphael after we had a <laughs> nice chat and we wanted to do this uh, session here uh, together. It's about open hardware. There are many people who run like open hardware projects or got started with open hardware projects um, um, uh, in Debian and around the, in the community. So um, we uh, were interested in inviting more people uh, to tell us what's going on with open hardware around uh, Debian and what is everyone doing. We already had some sessions here about electronics and details and so on. So this session is about um, open and free hardware. We can still like discuss this definition as well. And um, yeah, so welcome uh, to the session here, which is like uh, for 45 minutes um, until um, uh, quarter past five. And uh, yeah, I hand over to Raphael, who is from China, and uh, I'm Mario, by the way, from, from Germany. Um, so, Raphael, you have some, also some uh, introductions here. Hi, I'm Raphael Li from uh, Shenzhen, China, which is, a, which is a city for we can find the electric, electronic components very easily. So in, with that kind of uh, advantages, we've had made a lot of hardware-related projects. Uh, we are in a community which is called Shenzhen DIY, which is a D which is derived from Shenzhen Lag. So we are uh, more uh, Shenzhen Lag is a pure software community, and we want to make our hardware. And we want to have our own place, so we make uh, so we rent another place and uh, set up the Shenzhen DIY community. There we have uh, some. Some mechanical devices, including uh, CNC, uh, a small, small desktop CNC machine and uh, laser cutters, and different kinds of 3D printers. So we make, we make, uh, we may make some hardware there. Yeah. Mm. Um, so where is it based in Shenzhen? I know there is the. Let me move this microphone slightly. Okay. okay. Um, I know there is uh, Hua Chang Bay. There is uh, there is this space, for example, Troublemakers, uh, quite funny name, but uh, and there are maker fairs and so on. Where is based in Shenzhen, and how many people do you have already participating in your community? Our community have um, no more than thirty registered members, but for all the members who who is in the mailing list, that is around five hundred. So we are mainly at the place we rent is in the central of Shenzhen near uh, Shenzhen University. It's quite easy to find. We moved uh, to the last October. So before that, we are in uh, live in a village in city. After that, we live in a, a better place. No. Um, and uh, of course, we all want to know like about the tools and so on, and what what projects are you doing. So maybe we s we start uh, with the tools. So um, how much can you already do like with uh, free and uh, open source tools? How how far do you get? Like how accustomed are people uh, to uh, free tools? For free tools now, um, for for electronics design, EDA tools, and programming for embedded, and even uh, and even software develop on PC, we can do it all with free softwares. For PCB design, we use KiCad. And for uh, embedded software, we use ARM9 EABI GCC, and ARM9 EABI GDB, and mm, other softwares we develop with GCC or Python or some free sof some other free softwares. Yeah, so it sounds like you're uh, using a lot of different tools for different uh, uh, projects. That's so now we're very curious, what kind of projects do you have already? What kind of projects uh, are you using? So I can show you a little bit on, on the PC. So we have uh, GitLab. Uh, Git. I have made a project which is called the USB cable cracker. It's uh, uh, which is a, a device that can measure the quality of the different USB cables. It supports from type A, type B, mini USB, USB 3.0, and uh, and micro USB, and even USB type 3. So, th so this project is uh, all developed by free, free, free software. Mm. 
mm, with that with that device you can when you have different kinds of USB cables you can measure it measure all of them using this single device so uh, in our hacker community we have more than 100 different types of USB cables it's very convenient to have a, a standard standard instrument to measure all of the all of the qualities and and cut the cut the bed out mm. so we made the, this project i hope this will benefit everyone who who has a lot of usb cables so this uh, we've sold this uh, usb cable cracker for for yeah we have sold 20 usb cable crackers in different kinds of make fair and uh, offline meetings yeah uh, mm, yeah it works pretty well even another hiker, uh, Bunny Huang, who bought one from me. Yeah. <laughs> Bunny Huang is uh, um, like uh, uh, the original hacker of the um, uh, Microsoft uh, right, right, Xbox, yes, yeah. Connect, connect. And uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, based in Singapore, so uh, um, and also often in Shenzhen, right? So he bought one from you, so pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and you also like uh, showed me a keyboard uh, earlier uh, today, so that's that's another cool project that you're doing. Yes, yes, I built I built this keyboard for my daily use. Before that, I I use HHKB for typing, but but HHKB doesn't fit. Does not fit all my requirements, so I decided to make my own. Then we have this this keyboard. This there, is, there are a lot of uh, customized functions in in this keyboard. If you if you are interested, I can give it a short description. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, go ahead. Would be great. Well, this kind of keyboard, all the keys are aligned in a rect rectangular way. So when you put it in just in front of you, instead of uh, on the left corner, it fits your uh, fingers more conveniently, and your left hand does not need to turn for maybe 30 degrees to fit. Yeah, to fit that keyboard. So uh, another, there are a lot of there are uh, uh, eight bit switch on on the top of the PCB, so um, the user can. And select the different layout of this keyboard. It supports double rack and QWERT now. Maybe someday I will support Comac. It's not easy for, uh, no, it's not hard for adding another um, layout into this keyboard. All the, all the things you need to do is modify the, uh, modify the firmware. Yeah. Yeah. So and there are like different uh, um, uh, colors here. Uh, is there different? Is that uh, shiny? Or what, what's the reason for for this? Well, this like, is like, like some protectors, or what, what's the reason for it? No, no. These are uh, for just easier for identify 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 the different keyboards, identify the different keys. Uh, there are the the F key and J key are have some. Uh, markers on it, so when you can type blindly without looking in the keyboard. Other, other keycaps are uh, uh, modified for the same kind of reason. So the not um, the not often used keys are uh, with keycap to tell uh, the difference between different keys. So it's basically uh, all all these keycaps are modified for Typing blandly. Yeah. So, uh, how much is uh, the and, and how much uh, how far is this uh, uh, keyboard open, for example, or when you do projects, how open can you do that? So we had like different discussions here um, at Dep DepConf as well uh, that, uh, for example, the chip is not open uh, in many projects. The keyboard doesn't have a chip, but uh, um, yeah. So how far can you go? Like, for example, is um, uh, is anything laser cut or three D printed, or, or how do you build it? Like the different components. Mm -hmm. Well, the the PCB is all de designed using KiCad, which is a free software without problem, and the microcontroller on it is STM32. Uh, oh, okay. The chip itself is oh, not the chip, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, The chip itself is not okay, uh, so free, but but the two chain we use is is free. I use. Uh, 
ARM9 ARM9 EBI GCC for for compiling and ARM9 EBI GDP for debugging. And all the project is based on Makefile. Mm, and other parts, there are quite a lot of keys which I bought in from. Uh, I bought I bought a second-hand keyboard and, and tear and take the keys apart and then to use them build my own keyboard. Uh, other parts are um, other parts are all free, I think. Okay, and uh, so now like. Uh, w w like when I talk to hardware people from uh, China, like some people say to me, oh, well, actually, like we know open source, we know free software, um, but like uh, inside China, it often feels as, as if it is open already, yeah? Uh, because like uh, hardware developers from different companies and so on, they exchange information, they have uh, access to uh, different toolkits and so on. So what is your uh, um, reason for, for now going a step further and actually focusing on, on tools that are really free because we often hear from hardware developers in China, well, for me, it's no problem. I can get access to whatever I want. But how, what is your idea of making uh, something and, and advancing uh, the free software and, 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 and free hardware, open hardware community? Yeah, well, Shenzhen DIY, uh, we recommend to use different free softwares. Uh, mm, but the the freedom, the other side is that allow people to use whatever they want, even if it's a priority software. So I think that that is another kind of free uh, freedom. So uh, I'm I am using I've replaced all my software development environment into free software. I'm encouraging my colleagues and my friends to do that. I'm yeah. recommending different softwares to them. And yeah, but uh, do you have any like uh, um, idea why do why are you doing this? Well, well you know, two years before I just installed my Linux on my computer, and gradually I found it fit, fits all my need and all the functions I can implement in in a very a very easy way. I can use different kind of script to add to automation to make my uh, Daily activity, uh, daily activities automation, and when I reinstall the system, I do not have to click my mouse here and there to set all my settings. All I want to do is uh, synchronize my home folder into the another machine's home folder, and all my settings get back. So it saves me a lot of time. And for personal, for for my daily use, I wrote a lot of uh, scripts uh, to make some actions even faster, yeah. and I felt that is very uh, enjoyable. When I found an answer of of some um, some problems, that answer won't change for s several years. L not like Windows. In Windows, the different versions have uh, so many differences. And when you get the settings here in this version, it won't work in another version. And it cannot stop from upgrading when you are doing something really important and the computer stopped, started upgrading. You, you can do nothing with it, right? <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> yeah. So this is great to hear because uh, like I remember in the past, like people said, okay, uh, free software doesn't always have the, the features required by users or like uh, it, it, it's, it's not working for some people and it seems like here with, in the, with the free software community, we advance much further than um, some proprietary um, applications or settings or operating systems already could. So great news, great to hear this story and we, we have the first questions here. Okay, so, so um I'm, I'm quite frustrated with the keyboard on the market, especially the laptop ones. And mo the most recent trend uh, makes all the keyboards on laptop uh, suck. So therefore, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I want to get, get a touch on the keyboard. Would you mind me to? Uh yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool, sure. sorry, of course. Yeah. Let's pass this around. And yeah, yeah, possibly sure. pass around the audience. Okay, but, okay. there are some yeah. functions Please. you will not Get familiar with when you when this USB keyboard is not really working. So there are a lot of function cases implemented in a hardware way. When you can 
you can oh. press the F N key and J for home, another for end, another for delete. With this kind of layout, you do not need to move your hand around to access different keys. So, uh, although there is up, down, page up, and page down on my keyboard, but I can make, I already make a, an, some other hotkeys for it, for that. So, I so cool. you cannot. Uh, try this kind of um, but, but functions. But I want to get a feeling of it. Okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. And you I find me in the noise lab. <laughs> in the noise lab. You, yeah. can, you can have a... Please have a look around, then like pass the keyboards to others. Maybe others also want to try out. And uh, yeah. so so a, a, a request that I have here, for example, so you're not making the keys uh, yourself yet, and um, probably production is quite uh, challenging, but would be cool like if we get a keyboard that's completely open, like uh, let's say uh, uh, schematic 3D, um, the, the 3D uh, uh, um, file, you know, for, for, for the keys and so on as well. Maybe like it's uh, something you could do in future as well. Yes, sure. I am going to share. Uh, the reason that I did not uh, put this um, project on the internet is that I, I did not write a good manual and good comments for the <laughs> for the source code. That's the only reason. Yeah, but like now yeah. we have a lot of people here who would yeah. probably uh, like uh, uh, love to help you and he's already very excited about it. So yeah. I hope to see that uh, online soon. And uh, we have the next question here. Uh, just out of curiosity that I have you tried uh, other open sourced open hardware keyboard like GH GH sixties. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so how I'm uh, I'm curious that if you have you ever compared your your ones to their like the uh, budget issues or or keyboard layout costs those, those kind of things mm -hmm. because I remember I get a GH sixty for about a uh, hundred US dollar. So how much is the cost to make yours? Well, well, the the raw cost of my keyboard is really, really cheap. I got a lot of all the keys I use in my keyboard are, are second hand. <laughs> so, yeah. it's for other manufacturers, the PCB. It, I, I've got uh, five PCB for more for about twenty USB do No, 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 American dollars, and others uh, f for the processor STM32. It cost me around five dollars. Okay. That's uh, that's most of the bill of materials. It doesn't cost much. And for GH60, I remember that it it is a AVR based uh, controller. So with AVR based, the frequency is lower, the performance is lower, and there is not quite good two chain on Linux to program it. Yeah, although there are some. If you are dude, yes, yeah, yes, uh, maybe. And yeah, the, I think that it's quite easy to write it from where as well, but you, you, you get a point because the frequency is low, so some some cheater might, might happen if you type too fast, <laughs> I think. Okay. No, no, that, that, that won't be the problem. The, the, scan, the human input frequency is much lower than the, <laughs> the, mm -hmm. than the processor's frequency. Th this won't be a problem. But for I AVR development... I, 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 I have encountered some kind of cheater. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. the produc production quality is not well as well, yeah. I think. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. So there are other open source uh, free keyboards out there. And um, I would like to know, are there any other projects like, uh, because you said you have 30 people in, in, the, um, in your space yeah, working on that. Could you name a few other projects? What are people working on um, at the moment to maybe give us a, a wrap up that would be very interesting? Uh, there are some lists on this uh, uh, Shenzhen DIY website. We have a list of projects yeah, here. We can, we can kind of look. Yes, uh, the first uh, round name is Artarnis, which is a. Uh, okay. Press. Okay. Which is a GNU official project. So uh, the members then joined to the GNU because of this project, and and there are some other reasons. So this uh, this project is started in Shenzhen DIY community, and it it is based on uh, mm, you know, web architecture. 
uh, with simple command, you can set up your own web web server and web pages, and these the uh, uh, the web server is um, is aimed for high performance uh, web servers. It and, and the 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 communication in this web server are all asynchronous. So and and. And green thread is used. Mm. As we're focusing on hardware, uh, are there any specific hardware projects, especially? Mm. Okay. <laughs> yes. Ah, sorry. There are some, but it's not well documented. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so documentation, uh, documentation is always uh, like a, a, a challenge. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, okay. So maybe you, maybe you can just tell us like that. Mm. What, what, what are these projects doing? Well, we are. Uh, we have a lot of. Uh, a lot of members in our community can uh, both design software and hardware and. We may come get some uh, uh, projects. So we have designed a, a climate station, which uses a, a eighty-two sixty-six processor for Wi-Fi access. And we, with that kind of device, we can get the PM two point five and temperature and humidity and all of the data into our web server. This is, and we designed a laser cutter case for uh, for that PCB, yeah. and a small screen. Okay, so you're doing uh, many things, in, in uh, of course, like in your in your hackspace. How about like when you have visitors? Did you already get like international visitors to your space? Yeah, sure, uh, a if lot. If if I come over, can I work like a week in your space and and hang out with you guys? How how yes, does it work? Sure. Uh, there's a one day w there are more than 50 visitors from different kind of the wo different parts of the world visiting us yeah so so that's possible and I just get in touch with you through the website yes sure yeah. okay. there is email yeah there, uh, there is email there okay good so so this is great to know and uh, before we go like uh, uh, to the audience uh, uh, more in the middle, because uh, I know that many people are doing their project, I would also like to um, uh, show a project that uh, uh, the Force Asia community is doing. And um, um, so uh, uh, open hardware, I don't know, some of you might have seen it already. So we also like uh, producing open hardware in uh, with the Pocket Science Lab. Um, in like uh, in the community, and there is a the main developer is uh, the Pat Patmal. He is in Sri Lanka. Other developers are in India, um, in in Germany, and in Singapore. So it's a very like uh, 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 like uh, nice team like across Asia. And the idea of the Pocket Science Lab um, is to have a, an instrument where you can uh, measure um, different uh, uh, like el electronics, uh, for example, where you can measure resistance. We have a capacitance um, measurement here. And also, you can connect uh, many uh, sensors. So there are hundreds of sensors compatible. Um, it, this means you could use this device, for example, for, uh, uh, like, l let's say, biology lessons or um, even chemistry. For example, you could measure the CO2 in the uh, air, or you could measure even radioactivity. And uh, it's like completely open hardware, uh, except uh, for the chip, uh, what, what we mentioned or already before. So anyone interested? please check out uh, pslab.io. It's very uh, um, developer-focused website still. Um, yeah, which you can see here. And you find uh, all the repositories there. There is an Android app. Um, there's like different uh, repositories are linked here. And uh, we also have a desktop app um, where we look uh, uh, for uh, yeah, interested package maintainers here in the Debian community who would like to <laughs> Uh, um, uh, package these uh, um, 
uh, different uh, uh, apps uh, for the desktop. Um, so that would could be uh, one place where we could uh, uh, collaborate more. And we, we are also using uh, KiCad for this. Um, so if you're interested, um, please uh, get in touch uh, with us. Um, check out the different applications. I will also hand this around, and I think uh, now we would love to hear more uh, from the audience, right, uh, Raphael? Like, what, what, what are you guys doing? I know, for example, here our friend from Beijing was like yesterday already looking very interested uh, to to the hardware. So we know that there are many hardware developers here. So what projects are you doing here um, in the uh, community? What, what's going on in the community? Um, this is a buff, so we hope to uh, get some more information. Uh, from 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 you guys, and I think the microphone is open. Please feel free to to grab it and give us some information. Yeah, before we start the topic of uh, what the audience make, I I want to uh, share some um, share my view of free software and open hardware. So since we are in DevConf, a lot of us are familiar, quite familiar with free software. There are. Uh, the free software means you can distribute it uh, freely and modify freely and get the source code and uh, document freely. But for, mm, and we can use it in anywhere y you want. But for hardware, the the price uh, the price is not free itself is not free. And we are, and the chip the uh, the implementation of the chip is not free. But but. Uh, we try to make every other part free, including we we use free software for hardware development, including uh, uh, we uh, so the people can modify the mm, the design files freely instead of using some property software. So, so th I think that is the main point of. Um, Mm, open hardware. A lot of a lot of company use uh, some proprietary softwares for mm, for their kind of open hardware. But but when the document is uh, design document is released, we cannot modify it with uh, with uh, what we can got. I think that is uh, uh, what. I believe in whole open hardware. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it seems like probably everyone would agree here in in the room uh, uh, with that. Um, I still personally have a challenge with uh, uh, like uh, I met Stormin and he said to me like uh, call it free hardware, but I think free hardware is like people actually do think it's for free. Um, it's not the same as with software which you can share for free, you don't have to produce it, but like, um, I think we will figure this out. Uh, the, uh, the important thing is actually that we do it, that we do share yes. uh, all the sources, right? And yes. uh, yeah, yeah, we have I, I have a feeling that it would be very helpful in international relations if these copyright issues could be much simpler, if there's a commitment to open free sharing of the source um, that could help a lot in the East-West, you know, the China, question of fake uh, hardware, if I, you know, repro I don't have to tell people what that is, but, so this is my hunch, but what is your experience? Do you see that uh, Chinese manufacturers or developers see this advantage? Is it, can you get people to understand why it would be easier if the license was open? Sorry, I did not uh, get too long. the you mean. Can, can you convince people of the benefit of copy left? Do people understand? Well, people will understand it, it gradually. So we are telling people what free software is and tell them to try free software and free operating systems. Yeah. But it takes time. But I think things will getting better and better. For uh, for our company, we use we we are trying to make all of our development tools uh, uh, tool chain free. So um, our CTO is highly influenced by free software like ten years ago. So he 
So he convinced other colleagues to try free software and you know, using them in development. Okay. We we are getting better and better, but it takes time. It takes time. The kind of uh, uh, our company is quite rare, rare in in Shenzhen and in China. Um, but see, mm, well, ten years ago, even in community, you told people to use uh, free software for development, for for compiling. It's not possible. All all of them use some uh, Windows compilers. So uh, things are things are getting better and better now. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, in my opinion, for free hardware, it is better to uh, how to say how it is more reproducible by independent party. I mean that. So currently, I'm considering another free hardware, but uh, my concern is the availability of the chip. I mean that you know that mm -hmm. the. GD chip is only available in Chinese market. So uh, I think that I should not select the chip, perhaps. Uh, so my opinion is that if it is free hardware design, but uh, if it depends on some specific distribution channel, it's not good. That's my opinion. Yeah. I think it's a very important point. And uh, Nibe san, uh, I don't know if everyone knows about your project. Could you maybe also share? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I'm from GNU PG project, and I, I am developing by free hardware design the token for GNU PG. It's called FST01, and uh, in this conference, I also distribute another free hard hardware design of. Uh, kind of toy of LED matrix. Uh, it's free as beer. So <laughs> please, please, I, we have a booth there, FSIJ, Free Software Initiative of Japan, and uh, we are distributing a toy of LED matrix. And the uh, hardware design is available by KiCad and the uh, tool chain and uh, firmware is also available as a free software. Yeah. Yes. And uh, like especially with your project, I also know like uh, uh, we had some links uh, with another project, which is the Nitro Key yeah. uh, of Jan Zu in Germany. And uh, that was really uh, like great to see this co uh, collaboration and, and cooperation yeah. across projects where actually uh, in the Nitro Key uh, features um, of uh, uh, your project were implemented yes, in design. that key. Yeah. How, how did that work out? Uh, Nitroki just use uh, my design of FST01, mm -hmm. and they depend on my development of GNU PG SC demo. Yes, yeah. they are users of my my work. Yeah, and so actually we have a, a very good relationship between FSIG and Shenzhen DIY. Yes, yes, we already met three times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Every year I visit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nip Nipsang is a uh, is a uh, very important developer in GNU PG project. He designed a, a smart card like uh, hardware to store your uh, private key in. So and it cannot be read out through software. So the uh, work like this when you see a public key signed uh, message into the uh, GNU key, and the GNU key itself will, mm, will decrypt that message and send it back to the computer. So the key is stored in the microcontroller safely. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as I understand, also the Linux Foundation uh, um, uh, uses uh, this project as the uh, Nitro key is available like by uh, any kernel developer, by the way. Uh, uh, who wants to get uh, like uh, such a such a key yeah. uh, can like uh, apply with the Linux Foundation and uh, get this delivered uh, for free um, um, to their uh, to their address to use it uh, for kernel development. So it's actually like soon or maybe already it's the case that uh, um, every kernel developer will somehow use uh, your work as well, right? Uh, 
yes, it will be possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is a really great uh, and uh, also like, uh, of course, like then companies will follow in and, and we're getting like this idea of open and yeah. free hardware out there. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, we have uh, more questions here. Things that you have mentioned, uh, the chip is not open source, but uh, for nowadays, I think that will be much more easier for people that tries to implement their own chips. Uh, just like the, it's uh, the, the last year, November 29th, uh, 20, next year, uh, at the RIS-5, the, se the seventh workshop of it is the RIS-5 workshop. Uh, one of the kind of EDA tool, I don't, I don't know what the, what, what should I, uh, how should I call them? But, but they are trying to set up a service that uh, it includes a cloud-based uh, kind of variable log or hardware description language IDE on the on the on the cloud, and they also have the kind uh, the whole open source tool chain for people try to verify that, verify their uh, implementation, the those kind of stuffs. And finally, if you have uh, sort of enough money, they can arrange shuttle for you to the, the, the fab house to finally have your ASIC implementation. And uh, the fee, the, how, may, how much money you should put to make your ASIC is there. They, they didn't mention it, but I think will, the price will go lower and lower and lower. So maybe, I think it's quite op optimistic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so uh, I, I see like you have a lot of comments on, on these topics. So uh, I'm personally very curious, what are you uh, working on uh, actually? And uh, uh, so what is, the, what is your work? Because you, you have a lot of knowledge in these areas. Uh, actually not, I'm just a graduate student <laughs> and my work is not on the, the semiconductor. <laughs> yeah, so, but I played around risk five and open risk back then. Uh, when I was uh, year one of the college, I, I bought a very, very shady, <laughs> very very shady FPJ board and try to burn the open risk on it and run Linux on it. So that's why I, I have interest in the open hardware. Yeah. So this is great. So, but like uh, you, you have a lot of knowledge in this area, and if we have any questions here, we can also come back to you. For example, like this is the, what this buff is about, uh, uh, like finding and connecting different people um, who are working in the area. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, another question here from um, our friend in, uh, from Beijing. Uh, hello, everyone. And I want to address the, the, the greatest uh, challenge for uh, so-called open source uh, hardware. That is, uh, the in hardware the, uh, industry, uh, the concept of free is not uh, uh, is not as uh, as adopted as well as uh, as well adopted as uh, such a uh, concept uh, in uh, software industry. Uh, for example, I can I can take YubiKey, uh, a, a famous a famous uh, uh, security uh, device uh, as uh, an example. Uh, YubiKey is open to open to the community and uh, provide open source uh, software and uh, management management tools for us but however no one knows what the chip it is and uh, even if you are willing to uh, to create a free ubk okay uh, a free ubk and uh, <laughs> that's what he's doing yeah however however as far as i am concerned that uh, the the security element uh, chips is uh, the, the document of that chip is not open, isn't it? Yes. I traditionally ab avoid such implementation. Okay. Uh, however, uh, I I I don't I I should say uh, we uh, uh, we must uh, in in hardware industry we we should we should improve the the cons cons uh, the adoption of. Uh, the concept of free because nowadays it, mm, many chips we cannot even find the documentation or the data sheet. That is uh, a really really bad thing for us uh, for us designing hardware products. Yes. Yeah. So absolutely, and um, I've heard from many hardware developers um, that uh, they uh, don't want to sign NDAs, for example, like. Uh, 
um, often you have to sign NDAs in, uh, in order to get access to documentation. Because normally for in the video developers, we cannot sign NDA with companies. That That is impossible. So we cannot get any design resources and we we only we uh, just select uh, the we on, we can only select uh, those chips with uh, with open documents. But uh, those chips may uh, maybe in those, those those chips cannot might, uh, meet our requirement. Yeah. So uh, we also need to talk to companies actually to release their documentation. Uh, yes, for open documentary. Okay, open documentation. So that yeah. would be the next step that you uh, recommend. Also, what be you're a student at Tsinghua University, and uh, so you want to see also more uh, more of this in order to actually be able yes. to learn about uh, yes. um, uh, these technologies. Yeah. What is your experience here? So I think risc Five is a great opportuni opportunity for open hardware. So I'm quite optimistic in that area, and mm, yeah, that's my opinion. Well. Well, okay. Yeah. In our company, yeah, we in our company we even made patches for KiCad. Maybe sometimes we uh, we can put them into upstream to add more functions to the KiCad. This is uh, our uh, this is our contribution. Will be our contribution into the free software community. Yeah. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm trying to learn more about Linux and trying to pack some packages for Debian and or other distributions. Yeah. So and this hardware uh, actually costs money. Yeah, I mean you have to produce it. Um, it would be great to see more uh, uh, collaboration in the community to actually exchange also like experiences. How have different people like uh, produced hardware, and uh, um, how did we? Uh, um, yeah, how did we do it? Yeah, uh, how did you set up companies or did you set up foundations? Um, um, how uh, have you uh, uh, like worked together with uh, uh, companies maybe in China or elsewhere? So I think this would probably a topic for a whole new panel, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, like uh, sharing experiences uh, of real production of like uh, uh, generating income. Um, so more more open and free hardware can be produced, and I hope we see uh, uh, yeah more of it in the upcoming months and years. So I would like to thank everyone for their um, input here. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you all um, the participants here who have uh, like given insights uh, into their projects and uh, asked questions and uh, put in ideas. And uh, we have more uh, electronics and hardware topics here in the upcoming days at uh, Debian. Uh, please check out the schedule. And uh, let's keep this uh, uh, work here up and running and really like get to the next level of um, uh, free and open hardware. Thank you very much for joining. <laughs>